Seasons greetings everyone. Just before we start the clip, I wanted to remind you that the Critical Drinker merch store is up and running. And if you're interested in picking up some nice little goodies, we've got all manner of stuff to satisfy your every need. Anyway, on with the clip. The other thing I was um, curious to know about, because I know Chris, you've seen it. You have seen uh, Rebel Moon. Oh yeah, Zach Snyder's <laughs> magnum opus. <laughs> Dropping <laughs> what tonight at, at seven or something? Yeah. Seven? Yeah, so it's like three AM for us at, here in the UK because we're what we should be the prime time zone. <laughs> I, I gotta say, I'm excited. I never thought anyone would make a Battle Beyond the Stars remake. That's what yeah. I said. It's a battle be it's it's a remake of Battle Beyond the Stars, which was uh, Which is a fucking amazing movie. I love Battle Beyond. I love the it. Stars. The best Sith Star Wars ripoff, Seven Samurai ripoff ever. Sith yeah, Seven yeah. Samurai, Magnificent Seven. It's Battle Beyond the Stars, but far less interesting. Um, with it, it's just it's a mess. I mean, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. I get what James Wan was going for. This thing is utter. It's Zack Snyder unleashed, but he's he's it's it's nothing works. Everything is done in it, it. The way it looks like they colored the movie, it's incredibly muddy. It looks like Zack Snyder was sitting there. No, not Instagram from a Zack Snyder film. Surely right, not. Right. Well, <laughs> that's par for the course. But no, it's terrible. Not just from the script, but also the world building. You know, it starts out with uh, what's her name? Um, the, the main character's name. What's her name? Cora or something like that. She's plowing a field. She's a farmer. And it's just like, it's just like battle beyond the stars. A big ship comes and says, we're coming back and we're going to take all your, all your produce that you produce over the coming season. And then she goes off because she used to work for this galactic empire and is collecting different types of people, different mercenaries who have something against the empire, including an old general and a woman who has the samurai swords played by Boondai, uh, who fights, um, a spider played by Jenna Malone in a weird scene. That's one of the better scenes that works, but it's a complete and utter mess. And this is, this is, uh, by the way, if you go to a Walmart in uh, the United States here, you will find that they already have rebel moon action figures out. Hmm. They exist. There's a coming prequel comic with stories about these characters they all they needed was one good movie, and they don't have that by all accounts. Did y'all um, talk? Do you know who wrote that? Who's writing the prequel comic? Yes, I do. I've heard that. Mags yeah. Masaggio. That's yeah. um for people that know about the comic book industry, you uh, know of that person. We'll call them that person. Mm -hmm. Uh, what 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 a way to get everybody thrilled about your <laughs> your new property. You get Mags to write your prequel comic. One of the and Mag says that. Uh, they were hand selected by Zack Snyder, um, which can is, you get canceled for hand selecting now? What, <laughs> <laughs> generally speaking, but I guess not in this case. Um, so if that is true, if that is to be the case, um, yeah, what what a move. Let's just say that I don't understand it. Um, but I'm not going to try to pretend like I understand everything that's going on with Hollywood. Just when I heard that, I mean, uh, I'm not going to pretend like I was just stoked for freaking Rebel Moon. Uh, I wasn't, but I just can't imagine what that like um, from all the writers. Like it's a prequel comic. It's a brand new property. And you have all these writers, legends all around. And you say, you know what? Think Max, Max, that's who we're going with to, to pop this bad boy off. It's, I don't get it. Hmm. Chris, I'm, uh, uh, to Oh, I, I was just going to. Oh, oh, sure. so, yeah. oh, sorry, I was just going to say to Robert's point, I think Hollywood not only does a lot of hand selecting these days, but with Ezra Miller, I believe it was a mouth selection. But anyway, <laughs> I, Chris, I would I would ask you, you know, it's come out. Uh, Zack Snyder has talked about the fact that that he's made two different versions of this movie. And right. the version we haven't seen is this R rated, uh, uh, much, much different interpretation of the film that um, he says you know, is, is I, I don't know if it's his preferred version, the way Peter Jackson would say that the extended versions of Lord of the Rings are, but I find it interesting. They're, they're trying to appeal to the Snyder Cut fans. Like, it's streaming. It's not theatrical. Why wouldn't Zack Snyder make uh, his definitive version of the film? And he's made multiple versions of his past films. Watchmen has three different versions, for instance. 
Um, Dawn of the Dead has a, a two different versions. Why do you think he just didn't deliver his definitive version of the film in the first place? Uh, because Is there a vision he's, he's, of Army of the Dead that's in focus. Right, right. I, I, I just think that he's incredibly indecisive as a creator. J.J. Abrams has the same problem, but J.J. Abrams is ballless. And just um, when you look at the Star Wars sequels, it's like they didn't have the guts to actually um, execute on some of the better ideas. Not to say that, um, I mean, there were better ideas floating around that latest interview with Adam Driver, where he kind of reveals basically they didn't know what the F they were doing. It's like, yeah, oh, we, we knew that. But um, Rebel Moon is like, I'll just say this, um, because you're all going to be able to see it in a few hours, actually. Um, there's not a single... Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. There's not a single idea or moment in the film that is original. It, it's, it owes most of... I mean, you mentioned Battle Beyond the Stars, which I have a fondness for that movie. Love it. Because um, I, I saw it when I was a kid. Sybil Danning. Yeah, Sybil Danning. I have a Sybil her... Danning Battle Beyond the Stars action figure right over here. Oh, my nice. God. The, the globulous <laughs> breasts. Anyways, um, I mean, like big globes. So uh, and the score for the score for Battle Beyond the Stars, which is basically James Horner ripped himself off for Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Another conversation. Yeah. And but, he also uh, ripped Goldsmith off from his Star Trek The Motion Picture score. Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. There's, uh, But I love it. Yeah, yeah. But this is there's not a moment in it that you haven't seen in another movie. I mean, it's literally it it's sort of taking a little bit of Battle Beyond the Stars and then Ice Pirates. I'm not even joking no, on come Ice on. Pirates. Come on. Not dude. joking on Ice Pirates. Um uh Krull, only because I know these movies well, because Krull. I grew up watching these movies like that because you know it, it'd be like, okay, we live in a, a, an abundance of stuff that we can watch everything from anime to series and all this. And to the point where it's like, I've got stuff on backlog. Right. But when Rob and I, not to go like, you know, I used to walk We're 10 miles to school. Ancient. Yeah. Um, it would be like a year and it'd be like, Hey, there are four science fiction movies that are going to come out this year and that's it. Or maybe two. And then a year like 1982 comes along and that kind of blows things up mm. the story. But, but it's all this old eighties, sci-fi that that influenced it and the concept of hey i want to do like an r-rated star wars that would have been cool or star wars for adults would like to have seen that what what i saw which you actually can go see it in a theater rob in 70 millimeter at the egyptian it's playing at a couple if you look it up it is playing in theaters um in a, in a sparse way but uh it, it what they ended up with was just this compromised generic science fiction movie that feels like it was cobbled together from AI. There's even a couple shots in it that are very anime inspired that kind of feel like Akira. And it's like, Oh, that's a cool shot from Akira. I'm just going to use that. And I'm going to use this and I'm going to use this literally like the claw into some 80s sci-fi toy machine, grabbing mm -hmm. moments and lines and whatever to the point where it feels like it was written by AI. So it's God awful. I, I think it's a huge <laughs> mess I don't care what happens in part two. There is at the end in the third act, there are a few moments where you're like, oh, okay, I kind of see where this is going. I don't care. And there's even a, another scene that's a complete ripoff of the cantina scene from the original Star Wars, but done lesser. So everything that he does that he rips off is just a worse version of the source material. It's a comp for me, it's a complete fail. You might find some things to like about it, but. I really didn't like it down to the score down to the like, okay, I get it. You're going to do fast and then you're going to go slow motion. So you can extend these sh shots. You know, that's like a Snyder trope where he's constantly yeah. the, the like, and it's slow motion and no, it just doesn't like, dude, um, it definitely lacks. Uh, there's a vision. It just doesn't work and it lacks cohesion.